to From Thrift to Flip. My name is Bianca and if you don't know me already, I run The Gathered House over on Instagram. I live in Melbourne, Australia and because we're still in lockdown, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to introduce myself, what I do, the spaces I work in and even some of my personal collections. Now, this video will be short and sweet, but as soon as Melbourne is open up completely, I do hope to create more content for you, dig deeper into what I do, and hopefully share some tips and tricks along the way that I've learned. I really do love the reseller community and how much everybody is willing to share information. So as much as I hate being in front of the camera, I just knew I had to be involved. So on that note, I will tell you a little bit about myself. So I am 33 years old, probably 34 by the time you see this. I am married and I've got two kids. I have been reselling since about 2010 on and off. So it's been quite a while that I've been doing this. But in July this year, I finally quit my job. Um, it was a really scary time, but it has been the best decision I ever made. I am my own boss, I create my own hours, and I'm home a lot more um, with my family and with my kids, which has been amazing. My mental health has only gotten better because I'm finally doing what I love to do. Um, I am a collector, so I will show you some of the things that I still collect. I've collected so many things over the years, and I think that's helped with my knowledge on you know, things to buy and things to look out for. Um, I sell mainly vintage and retro collectibles. Um, my mum, I guess, is how I got into it. As a kid, she always used to take me to the markets and stuff, which I hated. Um, but, you know, when I got older, I was very arty, so I was going to the op shops and stuff to source items that I could upcycle. Um, and then from there, I basically became a hoarder. Um, I collected so many things. And one day, I think I just needed to pay a bill, so I just sold a couple things and yeah I was hooked that's how it all happened um, I am looking forward to getting back into the op shops hopefully another week or two and we can do that so that said if you see me out and about please come and say hello I am super shy and awkward and even if I wanted to I probably wouldn't come and say hello to you because I'm scared so please do that um, I am going to turn the camera around and we are going to go through some of my workspaces and see how I do things. Welcome to my office space. Um, this is the room where everything basically happens in for me. When I get home with a big haul, it comes in here and gets dumped. And I know you guys know that I clean for you because no reseller's office looks like this. Um, but I just wanted it to be clean so that you could see what I do. Um, I have two trolleys in here. One here is for my pickups and also all my postage stuff that is ready to go to the post office. So it's always in one spot. The other one holds the items that I use all the time. So more of my packing supplies, um, you know, scissors, pens and sticky tape, all that sort of stuff. Um, over here is my desk. I hate the admin side of reselling, but it is something that you have to do. And if you get it right from the start, your future self will thank you for it. Um, so this is where I do all of that. Down there I have my Dymo label printer. If you do not have one of those, do yourself a favour and look into it. It's not a must have, um, it is an investment. but. For me, it's made my life so much easier, um, as well as the My Business Post app um, with Australia Post. If you don't have one of those, sign up and um, you can get discounts on your postage. I've been reselling for like 10, 11 years. Do you know when I did this? This year. So yes, still learning new things. There are things that will, you know, fasten your processes. All you gotta do, log in, Put all your postage details in, it prints your labels, stick that onto your post, take it to the post office, no waiting in lines, um, and you just drop it off. So for me, it was a must have. Um, over here, I have my packing station as well. I have two, this is my main one. Um, this one has got my hexa wrap, scales, and bubble wrap over there in the other trolley, like I said, all the other things that I need um, with packing. And on this side of the wall is my main collection, so I'm excited to show you that. Um, you may not have ever seen them before, but um, if you do, do yourself a favour, grab them because there is a whole market for this. And this is my collection. So, 
This is my kitschy Japanese ceramic collection. Um, this is probably one of my first collections that um, only grew due to Instagram. Um, I saw one little cute thing with a face on it and it just exploded. Um, the top one is a Nesco Winking Kitty. The middle one is Left and Mistress and the bottom is Left and Bluebird. Um, along the top there are a couple of Norcrest Bluebirds chucked in there as well which are also collectible. Um, down here I've got my big flamingos and then my selection of eyelash cats. These guys are Japanese as well, there's not too much information on them, um, but they do fetch quite a bit of money. Um, if anybody has a purple set, hit me up, I need one. Um, these go for some crazy prices. Again, prices go up and down over the years, so I've paid ridiculous amounts of money and I've also grabbed some bargains as well. Um, just so you've got an idea, this dish at the top, I shipped it from USA, which a lot of them have come from, but I spent 450 Australian dollars on it. So if you do happen to come across these items, please do your research um, because you will make money on them. Um, not every little Japanese thing, you know, will go for a lot of money, but if it's cute and got good colours, it's stamped, you know, there, there is a big group of people that collect this stuff. Um, what else? I have, you know, there's more bluebirds there. This is Holt Howard, uh, another cat sort of company. So there are lots of um, different people and companies that do those things. Um, look into it because when you leave it behind, someone else is grabbing it, flipping it and making money. So yeah, that's a little tip today. Um, I hope you enjoyed looking at it. Um, and it opens you up to some other avenues of things to look out for as well. Welcome to my photo station. As you saw, this is my bedroom. Um, I chose this room for two reasons. One, I've got this big window that brings in amazing natural light. And two, because it's out of the way of the kids. I don't have to worry about anything, you know, getting knocked over or setting it up and then taking it down. Um, so that's why it's in here. I have my trolley that I can just wheel in and out from the study or from my office or the garage. Fill it up with everything that I want to take photos of and just bring it here. Um, I've got a coat hanger in there so when I do clothes I just take this down um, and I hang it on the wall I can bring those lights here and brighten that section up I have recently bought this um, standing desk it cost me $89 from eBay if anyone is interested it is adjustable and it can tilt and stuff like that I did that because I was working on like a low coffee table and after so many days and hours of you know bending and doing that um, I was really feeling the pain in my back and I don't know if you know some of you follow me on Instagram but I was out of work for like four to five weeks because I'd done something to my back I could not move um, so for me this was a necessity um, if you are just starting out please work on something at least table height because um, you can do damage by you know bending constantly um, I also invested in lights again you don't need to Natural light is your best friend, um, but if you are going to invest in lights, um, I bought three just to make it more of like a light box feel. Um, I would suggest buying this one, which is the ring light. It is much stronger than the other two. Um, on eBay, just be careful. This is the second one I bought because the first one, it just came with a USB plug. Um, and obviously I don't have a computer in here. Um, so this one has a plug. And yeah, much stronger than the other two. But yeah, so this is my um, station down here. I also have my big jar of tags. I don't really buy too much um, clothing and stuff. So when I get a tag, it's like weirdly exciting for me. So I store them all in this jar. Um, I don't know what the point is of that. But I just know that when it's filled, I win. <laughs> So yeah, that goes there, and that's it. I try and keep everything um, neat and tidy so that as soon as I come in, I can just pretty much start. Um, you want to have your photos, 
clean, not blurry, bright enough. So sometimes I do edit them on um, Instagram or you know some sort of app before uploading them. Um, but you don't want to do it too much where you're not showing like the you know the the proper colors that something are. You don't want to enhance it too much. Um, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to take you now. So we've done the office where I get home, I dump everything, then it comes in here to get photographed, it goes back into the office to get measured and put into Excel on what tub it is, and then it goes to the storage room. So I'm going to take you there, um, and you can see how I store all of my stuff. And this is the stock room. Um, so this is on the other side of my garage. I'm lucky we've got a double garage plus whatever they call, I think it was a workspace area. Um, so this... I've done over the lockdown and um, I ordered some more shelving and some more tubs um, and so basically this side is empty. I haven't even got stock for that because I haven't been out since July. So I'm looking forward to spending up a storm in a couple of weeks. Um, this is my second packing station so if I'm ever outside or whatever I can do it here too. I've got all my supplies under here. Um, over there is my calendar where I put all my results and stuff. Obviously stone cold has to be up there. Um, but yeah, it makes my life really easy because everything has got its place. When I um, buy something and then I take photos, I input into my Excel sheet which tub it's in so that when it sells, I just look it up. Yep, it's in box 17, pull it out and it's done. My front room so there's no TV in here when the kids um, go to sleep this is generally where I'll come and sit and do some work um, but yeah this is just another thing so if it's not you know what you generally look out for this could be something that you could um, research a little bit more um, this is my mainly mid-century uh, retro room here are genie bottles these can fetch quite a little bit of money if you're lucky enough to find red purple or pink um, those three are your main like super unicorn colors that you know fetch hundreds of dollars um, and then down here I've got my West German pottery and Italian pottery like Batossi. Batossi is generally the the blue sort of ones um, and yeah West German there are a lot of West German pieces out there um, planters so putting plants in them and stuff they go for a lot um, you really want to look out for the the colouring and the styles of them. There's a lot of like brown ones, which is fine. Like I love brown pottery too, but the ones that have got you know like fat lava or bright colours, they do tend to go for a lot more. Um, and then up here as well, um, I don't buy much vintage and retro art, but these guys um, can be worth quite a lot of money. They're done by Trechkov. Um, I've sold this one quite a few times um, from anywhere from three to four hundred dollars each. I sold this one um, just a couple of weeks ago for six hundred. So there's definitely money in them. Um, another one to look out for as far as art go would be J.H. Lynch. Um, he also does paintings of women as well um, and they can go for around 150, 200 um, and even sometimes more depending on the condition. Um, I've actually found a couple of those at garage sales and op shops so you can still find them. So hopefully yeah that gives you something else that you can maybe look into. So on this wall here I've got um, three of my Starburst clocks. This is another thing that I would not leave behind if you can get for a cheap enough price. Um, these can sell anywhere from $100 to $400 depending on the size, depending on the condition and if they're working. Um, but these, I think combined I've spent less than $150 on them and you could easily sell one of them for that price. So yeah, if you see them, grab them um, because there is a market for them. And lastly, uh, these big black ceramic panthers. Um, this is the last one I've got and it's not for sale unfortunately. This was actually a gift off somebody that we went and picked up something else off Marketplace. Um, but these big beauties, they actually go for a lot of money as well. Um, I've sold, I'm going to say at least 10 in the last couple of years. I recently sold one again a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was a different style but, you know, similar. And that one was 380 I've sold this one a few times um, for over 400 
and yeah so if you see these you know I've picked these up for twenty dollars from the op shop before um, I've also paid a hundred dollars because I know I can flip them for three hundred so yeah if it's not something that you normally look for don't pass it up because these guys um, yeah fetch some money Thank you so much to everyone that has watched this video. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. In a couple of weeks when lockdown is over, there will be more videos of thrifting and showing you what's been selling, other tips and tricks as well. And um, I'd like to leave you with a little story of just something that's always stuck with me in my reselling journey. Um, when Willow was a baby, she used to watch this uh, video clip um, it was called The Source um, on YouTube. It's a song and it's like animated with um, little cartoons and it's like cool little um, sounds and stuff. She used to cry all the time and that was like the only thing that could um, basically keep her calm for some reason. Anyway, you know how I sell lots of like Japanese ceramic kitsch stuff? I had this um, sunflower wall vase with like a face on it. Um, someone had bought it from me from eBay. I'm packing it. This is few years ago when my husband Dave used to help with the packing and he was looking at the address and the name and he's like babe this is Felix Colgrave I'm like yeah and and he's like the Felix Colgrave from the source the guy that does the illustrations for the source and I was like what so I emailed him um, back on eBay and it was him I told him the story and it was just super cool to be able to say thanks for you know keeping my kid calm for like two years straight um, I'll show you a picture of what it was just so you can see but yeah that's just something that's always like I've always been like you know that was a cool moment in my reselling journey so I would love to hear something um, from you guys what was something that you have always remembered or held on to it doesn't have to be like that but just just that moment we were like yeah you know so leave a comment um, get in touch with me on Instagram there if you want to um, please I'm always here if you have anything that you think that um, we'd be interested in buying so that we could sell please again send us a DM all our details will be below and lastly, before I go, I need to do this. I need to give a massive shout out to Drew and Sarah from Look Mum I'm Hustling, Chris Verlong from Further Your Lifestyle, and Jada from Diary of a Flipper. You guys have always been so positive and helped me in so many ways. So I need to say thank you for inspiring me to do this and all your information is in the bottom as well. So if anybody doesn't follow them, please give them some love. They deserve it. Thank you so much everyone again for our first video. That's it. Bye. And they are actually quite uh, hard. Fuck.